Yep. That's what I thought would happen. Hello, folks. Welcome back to another show with me, the one, the only Hobo Tom. Um, well, that's my jacket. Nope, no girlfriend again yet. But we'll get we'll get to that later, though. Because again, this was. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about Raw. This is the Raw after Night of Champions or Clash of Champions. I'm like confused now. I forget what they called this that pay per view. But it was okay. Then I had a little hobo cooking show afterwards. Um, so I'm here to talk about Raw. Um, first of all, I like to get some shout outs out. Tim Scott, this six count goes out to you. He left a comment, and his comment went, what, no live stream? Uh, no, I am on a hobo punishment for, actually, I just did the math, 75 more days until I can live stream again. I know with WWE, I can only get nine seconds worth of matches in before they say, you're out of here. Impact's a little looser. I might do a lot more AAA live, live streaming. Because for some reason, if you're on Twitch, you can actually live stream the show as a Twitch partner. Or claim to be a Twitch partner. I might do more AAA, especially as it comes around. AEW obviously has the $50,000 copyright software because it took them 12 hours to take off my video and give this guy a copyright strike. So I can't do anything again for 75 more days. So I'll try to do more live streaming probably of AAA. Again, it all depends on the event showing up. So un unfortunately, Tim Scott Everything else is going to be just kind of a review, so I don't blame you if you want to you want to cancel your subscription. Well, it's free anyway, but 
but you do get some content and you get shout outs, I guess. But enough about this nonsense. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. This was an interesting show. It actually, for some reason, was better, I think at least. In most in most parts, in, in some parts it's still Monday Night Raw. But in most parts it seemed actually better than Night of Champions. And I still have to get used to it. Oh, I'm used to scratching my ear. So it's been a long day for me. It's on Monday. Mondays are always, I don't know, weird days. And I have to get this done in, in 20 more minutes, so I have to hurry my hobo butt up. Let's get things started. It starts off with a Seth Rollins promo and a recap. And then, yeah, hey, Bray Wyatt started with the Firefly Funhouse, who they're actually featuring more because they are going to have a match at Hell in a Cell. I forget where that is, though. Oh, that's, I don't know. That's weird. Um, and that's going to oh, mean like three more weeks, though. That means I have to figure out one, two, I have to cross it off. Have to figure out what I'm going to have for breakfast that night. I have my apple Evan Williams. I have to figure out I should ask people. Evan Williams apple flavored bourbon. Would that go good with orange soda or grapefruit soda? Or some other fruity soda. Oh, I could do do green apple soda too. Except for I have to figure out where they have two liters of green apple soda. I'll think about that. And not the not the uh, Spanish apple soda that tastes like blah. I don't like that for some reason. Apples like like apple seed apple apple cider. And sweet soda that never doesn't really mix that well. So um, you guys can let me know what tastes better. Again, you can always do that in the comments section. Um, Bray uh, Bray White showed up, which is pretty cool. The rabbit shows up. The rabbit's the best. Rambling rabbits, the best. He's just like stay away. <laughs> and he again, uh, Kevin Dunn screwed up a lot. He was obviously still somewhere because the next couple of preview slots were upside down. And thank you, Renee, for stating the obvious. Because she just said, was all this upside down? Yes, it was. <laughs> so again, um, oh, and then that illiterate Tennessee crowd. God, I hate the South. But they're like, dear. It's Yowie. Wowie. Not yay way. I don't know. I don't know what's up with Tennessee. Again, I just make fun of people in general. Especially from the South. Stupid father nerd. Double worth going on. No, they realize that they're umbrella. Oops. I have to stop mumbling. But um and then So Braun's just in the back, upset. Uh, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode and the Revival come out for some tag team summit. I don't know. Braun just beats up people. He cleans house. That's what Braun does. It was a Nikki and Alexa promo, and they fixed it. It was always good. Again, Hell in a Cell's in three weeks. And then the wrestling didn't start off for about 20 minutes. Well, that's going to be... A longer time period than this video, I hope, or at least the raw, unedited part before I put in some stuff. But it starts off with the club, which is, of course, Carl Anderson, the machine gunner, Luke Gallows, and the phenomenal AJ Styles. Takes on the Viking Raiders and Cedric Alexander. This was, again, a pretty fun match. They continued it. They gave this match more time than they gave Cedric and AJ on the pre-show. Oh, not even the pre-show. But they gave them more time this match than on the pre-show, which is terrible. Um, again, very aggressive start. And then uh, Eric 
was AJ, and then, wow, Carl Anderson comes in, and he starts to beat up people, which is rare, because normally Carl Anderson is the one to get the pin. New, New Callis gets in, and then all of a sudden it turns to a New Japan match. Good stuff. Uh, they isolate Eric, beat him up a little bit. Uh, Ivar comes in, he cleans house until until they beat up Ivar. Uh, Gallows choke slams Ivar, and that's your typical uh, six man spot fest. Is the trio's spot fest? AJ does hit the Styles Clash on Cedric Alexander a second time, the first time being last night. Pins him for the win. One, two, three. And then he says, uh, uh, we're not done. Again, they just start beating up everyone. The club comes in, beats up everyone. Cedric Alexander eats a second second rope Styles Clash, which was really cool looking. Um, they could have had this even go longer. If they turn this into a New Japan style feud, that would be really fun. But overall, I was really happy with this match. I was happier about this match than the pre-show match for Clash of Champions. This is a cheeseburger match. Then there's a 24-7 segment with R-Truth and Pain! Or actually, Mayor Glenn Jacobs. Here. Right, but... Oh, then there was a funny No Way Jose Kit Kat commercial. That was pretty cool. He had to tell the, the Congo Lane to Tranquilo and take a break, because give it a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. So that was kind of fun, though. That's different. It's always nice. I still think the, the best... Commercial is Rusev and Lana. Oh, we'll see Rusev later. Rusev and Lana in Dollar Tree. Because that just seems so natural for Rusev. That's cool. In fact, I have to go to Dollar Tree tomorrow. I have to get some stuff. Uh, then we had Baron Corbin versus Chad Gable in a King of the Ring match. Which I guess. For timing issues, they put on today instead of last night. I understand the timing of it. They could have put this on the pre-show, taken a couple of minutes off of everything else, bumped up AJ Styles, Cedric Alexander to the main show, but obviously I'm not in charge of WWE. So it was Baron Corbin versus Chad Deal. Um, it, was, it was the strength of Corbin versus the te the te technique of Chad Gable. It started off a really technical match. I'll tell you what, any technical match where I see collegiate wrestling, that's always fun. Uh, again, it's amazing stuff. Gable is being a freestyle wrestler and collegiate wrestler, obviously like that. Uh, Corbin, he's just beating up Gable, though. He just Tosses him around. And then he threw him through slash on top the, the, the comfy announced chair, the high backed padded leather chair that looks comfy, which I have to get one day when I can afford it. We'll see. I got rid of squeaky chair or keep squeaky chair, but stuff in the closet somewhere. But I do like my bungee cord chair. Whatever chair dies first on me. I think I had one bungee cord chair for gee, 10 years. Well, then Maddox finally gave out. So I had to get a new chair and I got a squeaky chair, which was still the right price. It's actually fairly comfortable, too. With this, um, again, that was fun. Corbin just uses a clubbing blows. Again, he's the brute in this match. He's the brutish heel in this match. It makes sense. Uh, there's, <laughs> I think that then someone shot. There, you have no chance. And hell, that's what they should have said. And do do some gimmick infringement there. Uh, Gable again, off the top rope with a missile drop kick. Amazing stuff. Corbin has that ability to toss Gable around though, like anything. Uh, the roll through German suplex. That's a great spot. He had the ankle lock in for a while. Eventually, 
Corbin gets to the ropes. He's long enough. And then, again, it's kind of end of end of days onto Chad Gable off the ropes after swinging around a lot, which is pretty cool. And we now have King Corbin. Long live King Corbin. Long live King Corbin. And actually, a surf and surf match. And for some reason, Baron's doing a lot better. Maybe it's the, the opponents and stuff. Then we have a Maria Canales. God, this is so... So 90s WWE. Uh, but we had a Maria Canales baby reveal. And instead of having a baby the reveal, it was a father reveal. And Ricochet, you are the father. Which is always rare to see. And then, what was it? In Discord, we were talking about having a baby on a forklift match. <laughs> a Maria Canellis on a pole match. Wait a second, that's how this happened. Oh, or, or, or wait, or, or, or did commentary mention that? Corinne was just probably just doing everything that she could do to stop from laughing. Uh, then there's a quick match. Mike Knellis versus Ricochet. Fight me! At least someone other than Alistair Black saying fight me, which is good. Uh, it wasn't much of a match. I think it took less than five minutes. Uh, Mike Knellis started a brawl with Ricochet. Once it went to a technical match, Ricochet hit a flying lariat onto Mike Knellis. It was a pin. One, two, three. And really, it was a can of soup match. It, this was it. Uh, Renee made some funny comments. Again, she's just like, why me? A can of soup match. Then there was a second Firefly Funhouse, the Wall of Friendship. And eventually, a sus picture goes up there, so we'll see what happens. And then, as we get back to kind of raw proper, there's a twist. Maria starts to degrade poor Mike again. This is who the real father is. Rusev Machka. Rusev Crush. Because it's Rusev Day. All over again. And this is a handsome Rusev because he got a haircut. <laughs> he has like the stylized mustache. He lost a lot of weight. He looks slimmer, trimmer. Good job, Rusev. Even better job, Lana. Um, so Rusev's the father. Uh, Rusev just beats up Mike Knellis. Mike's like, no, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to fight. Is the baby's all yours? And Rusev just kind of breaks Mike Kanellis. No other way to put it. He had another really can. Then became a match, and it was a real can of soup. Then we have another twenty four seven, a twenty four seven stuff with with Kane, and Kane becomes the next twenty four seven champion after he pins him on the. I forget if it's if Knoxville is Vanderbilt or the University of Tennessee. I forget it was Nashville. I just know it's Tennessee. So I don't know. They pinned he pinned him on the football field after R Truth calls him Mr. President. Mr. President Mayor uh, Superintendent. A whole bunch of accolades. And this led us to the next match of Ray Mysterio versus Cesaro. They could do this every three weeks. I'd be ecstatic because Rey Mysterio and Cesaro is so good. Uh, Cesaro is just so strong. He makes fun of of Dominic. That starts Rey's upset. Rey's ready for a match. Cesaro just wrestles in like pants. Cesaro could wrestle naked, and it would be amazing. Um, oh wait, I said that didn't I? Yeah, Cesaro is great though. He could wrestle in a full suit. It'll be amazing. 
not even terribly suited because Cesaro is so strong. Ray's Ray's classic Ray. I mean, he seems to get the ring. He seems to have gotten the ring rust off because he's a little bit faster, a little bit more agile than when he was a couple weeks ago. So that's always good to see. Again, he caught Ray in the six one nine. And then the crowd was pretty local at some points. Someone shouted out, Viva la Rosa! Whoa, that means like live the race or something, I think. Yeah, that's what. Well, I know Puerto Ricans chant that so often. But yeah, it's something to do with Latin stuff. Let's see some more notes. And they the uh, Ray hit the crucifix driver, which is always cool. And for this, I mean, he, he just caught him. Cesaro caught him. And even when caught, Ray can still twirl all over the place. They hit, uh, oh, I'll tell you what, Cesaro nailed the Gorilla Press GTS. That should have finished the match period, but it didn't. Uh, Ray hit the Lucha Destroyer for the win. And again, that was a, I'll tell you what, this was a really good match. This is a surf and turf match. Oh, yeah, I also wanted to say all this 24-7 stuff. Um, well, there's actually more Firefly Funhouse stuff. Suspects is going up. And there's a little author of a pain promo. Um, I'll say this right now. I'll, I'll, I'll clump it together because obviously if Kane's going to win the belt because he's Mayor Glenn Jacobs and actually has a real job, um, he loses a belt. All of the 24-7 stuff. This was good. It was, it was different. I'll say it's a ham sandwich. Then it was Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Um, starts off, Sasha just beats up Alexa. Poor Alexa. I'll tell you what. Alexa can just slap the taste out of one's mouth. Uh, again, Alexa hit her classic double knees. And she also hit a Lucha Destroyer. Which is what I love. Uh, Lucha Destroyer is almost like a Canadian Destroyer. Except for being a pile driver, it's more like a a power bomb. Where the person lands kind of on their back, off the top of the shoulders, versus the head. So again, the fact that Bailey allowed her to hit, hit the Lucha Destroyer was amazing. Bailey is actually really good. And this... Sasha Banks didn't do a lot. It's either that or she just didn't seem as botchy. Maybe being in a tag team kind of hides her weaknesses. I don't know. Uh, again, Sasha Banks. <laughs> hey, the only thing I can say about Sasha Banks, no one's trying to group her this time. Is that me news? Um, some, some guy tried, tried to grab... There we go. Try to grab some some anky booty during uh, the uh, Clash of Champions when they were in the crowd. I have mixed feelings about that. If you're going to go in the crowd, unless you have like a ring of security around you, someone's going to do something stupid eventually. Um, they shouldn't. I mean, if I saw Sasha Banks stick her butt even near my face, um, I'll be honest. I would grab it too, probably. But again, that's because she's in the crowd part. I'm not in the ring part. Once you go into the crowd, it kind of get at least I think, it gets kind of shaky territory. Then a lot of wrestlers don't mind being slapped on the shoulders. Um, of course, there's always a high five. My opinion is, my opinion is that if the wrestlers are in the crowd, yeah, stuff like that might happen. If the wrestlers are in on the other side of the barricade, so here's barricade. Here's here's me, happy fan. Here is pro wrestler doing stuff. So here, 
me happy fan pro wrestler comes over happy fan Woo-hoo. that's one thing happy fan however goes over and woohoo again especially if like both feet are there like uh what was it in AAA with Scarlet Bordeaux no and she was in the wrestler space and was in fan space fan reached over tried to I don't know whoa um she was in the fan space uh, it's to me it's somewhat like the rumble in Auburn Hills where once granted fans should not throw stuff but I don't know I, I, I forget the exact details. I think a friend a fan or a what's his face got into the crowd because he was chasing after a loose ball. Fan threw cup of soda. He stayed in crowd and started to fight fan. You get in the fan space. That's weird space. Because you're in the fan space. So, again, you shouldn't throw a cup at someone. But, I don't know. That's that's for, for lawyers and other people to argue with. This was overall a good match. Uh, Haley's just being the mean heel. And Nikki's so good. She pulled the uh, thing off with where she pulls the ring apron. Banks got in there. She just started to beat up Banks. Uh, Banks was trying to get back up because eventually Alexa Bliss hurt her knee. Uh, she's done that so many times. She should wear a knee brace if that's the regular occurrence. So she hurt her knee. So it was just Nikki versus the, versus um, Sasha Banks and Bailey. Nikki held her own, though. I'll tell you what. She almost... Again, the only botchy moment with that is Sasha almost knocked herself out because she sold the one hit. Like, hit her head. Like, you could see squ- almost square against the middle part of the ring. Not where the padding is, but where the middle part is. So that, I don't know. Just when you, She's going to knock herself out one day. Uh, Sasha does hit the bank statement. N- Nikki taps out. Nikki was getting beat up. Nikki did a really good job, though, of holding her own, though. So this match, even though Sasha Banks and Bailey won, it was still a really fun, entertaining match. This was a surf and turf match. And then, of course, Sasha's becoming the chairman. Oh, wait, I can't say that. That's La Parka. Sasha, that is gimmick infringement. Only La Parka can do that. And Corey Graves, you should know better. I forget if they called her the chairwoman or something. Let's see, what was that? She was handed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that Bailey's heel, my question is can Bailey now handle a kendo stick? Because she can obviously handle a chair. Well, actually, she doesn't really handle chairs, she saves that f- for Sasha. She just gives her the chair. Ooh. Then um, once Sasha brings in the chair, cue Bailey's cue Becky's music. They have dueling chairs for a while. Bailey has Bailey comes in the ring with a chair. Um, cue Charlotte's music because it's like a Mexican standoff in the ring. Cue Charlotte's music. Charlotte, I don't know how she did this, but she did take a stutter step, kick Bailey right in the head when she was wearing heels. I have no idea how she did that. And then she picks up said chair. Sasha and Bailey eventually retreat. It was fun. Uh, Sasha Banks is angry. She's cursing again. And she does the New Japan thing of challenging. How dare she challenge Becky Lynch to a Hell in a Cell match. Uh, I already talked about the 24-7 stuff. That was all a can of soup. Then Becky Lynch accepts. In classic New Japan style. And we're on the match. Lacey Evans versus Dana Brooke. I'll tell you what. Dana Brooke looks cute again. And she's actually. She has some multicolored hair. She's come back. She's reinv- she, she seems reinvigorated. 
seems really happy to be back. Uh, stomps on the fingers, which is always fun to see. Uh, someone, <laughs> Lacey Evans started to get the better of this. Someone in the <laughs> crowd, get your hand off my girlfriend. You gotta love fans. That was a relatively simple match. Uh, Lacey did not hit her moonsault. She kind of teased her, teased her, hit her with the woman's right, and that was it to beat Dana Brooke. And then, actually, she, she didn't go for the pin. She went for the sharpshooter. So I guess there's still going to be more stuff between Lacey and Natalia. I don't know. Battle of sharpshooters. But I'll tell you what, this was a good short match. Highlight Dana Brooke hid Lacey's lack of wrestling skills. This was a cheeseburger match. Then the main event, uh, Seth Rollins versus Robert Roode. Oh, what was the crowd? I don't know. The crowd was chanting something. The, the crowd was getting better as, as the show went on. Uh, Seth comes out. Uh, Seth controls the match for most of it. Uh, Robert Roode does have that great-looking backbreaker. Uh, Dolph, again, pokes his head in where it shouldn't be. He, yes, he, Dolph gets his cheap shots in like he should as heel. Classic Seth offense, hit the stomp. Uh, Ziggler comes in to break it up. And then <laughs> AJ and the club come in. They just want to beat up Seth. Hey, it's time to beat up Seth Rollins. And so, of course, it was DQ'd. But it was a fun match. It was a death to finish. It was a death to ham sandwich. And the club come in and start to beat up Seth. Seth gets Styles clashed for his efforts. Uh, Kane shows up, starts to make the save, and then the Fiend shows up and chokes out Kane. So again, overall, it was a fun show. It was a good cheeseburger raw. Um, with that, again, I'm gonna kind of wrap this up because I have to get to the phone because I took a nap earlier and I had stuff to do. So, remember, Tuesday is my SmackDown show. Thursdays live NXT. Uh, Friday's going to be my Impact Wrestling. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do when Impact and WWE are in conflict with each other. Or would it be 8 to 10? Oh, they could do that. 8, eight to 10, then 10 to midnight. So I just combine shows. And have a break in between. And thanks everyone for watching. Bye.